last night. Something uneasy lies ahead, but where's the crown? Was how I put it. A profound and original thought that may well go down to posterity. You mean it may go down well with posterity? I sure hope so. Remind me of another little thing I told Her Majesty. Something about a harsh light beating on the throne. Posterity may like that too. <laughs> well, what is it? It is in the matter of Her Royal Highness's Wedding. Oh, <laughs> yes. As I'm sure you are aware of, Your Majesty, the young Prince Simon arrives today to seek Her Royal Highness's hand in marriage. <laughs> and as far as I'm aware of, he has not yet, um... You mean he hasn't heard anything? <laughs> it is a little difficult to put this tactfully, Your Majesty. Do your best. I shall tell you afterwards how you got along. Well, let me put it this way. The Prince Simon will arrive and will naturally assume that Her Royal Highness has the customary, so customary as to be, in my own poor opinion. Slightly monotonous, has what one might call the inevitable, so inevitable to be, in my opinion again, almost mechanical, will assume that Her Royal Highness has, as I put it, faultily faultless, icily regular, <laughs> splendidly. What you are trying to say in the fewest words possible is that my daughter isn't beautiful. Her beauty is certainly elusive, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It has eluded you. It has eluded me. It has eluded everyone who has seen her. It has even eluded the court painter. His last words were, well, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> His successor is now painting the view across the water meadow from the west turret. His doctor advises him to stick strictly to landscapes. <laughs> it is unfortunate, Your Majesty, but one cannot understand how it all can have occurred. You don't think she takes after me? You don't detect the likeness? Most certainly not, Your Majesty. <laughs> Good. Your predecessor, did. I've often wondered about my predecessor. Well, now you know. <laughs> Well, looking at the bright side, although Her Royal Highness is not, strictly speaking, beautiful... Not truthfully speaking beautiful. Yet she has great beauty of character. My dear Chancellor, we are not considering Her Royal Highness's character, but her chances of getting married. You do observe a distinction. Yes, Your Majesty. Look at it from the suitor's point of view. It is easy to assume that a beautiful girl has touched away inside of her unequally beautiful character. It is impossible to assume, however, that an unattractive girl, however <coughs> elevated in character, has tucked away inside of her an equally beautiful face. That is, so to speak, not the way you want it. Tucked away. Quite so, Your Majesty. That does not alter the fact that Princess Camilla is quite the nicest person in the kingdom. Most certainly, Your Majesty, with the exception, I might add, of Your Majesty, and of course, Her Majesty. Your exceptions are tolerated for their loyalty yeah. and condemned for their extreme fatuity. Thank you. <laughs> As an adjective for your king, the word nice is ill-chosen. As an adjective for Her Majesty, the word nice is ill-chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Camilla. As always, my dear, you are right. This fellow, Simon, what is he like? Oh, uh, we don't know anything about him, Your Majesty. How old is he? Five and twenty, I understand. In twenty-five years, he must have been seen by somebody. Just a fleeting whoops. <laughs> what I meant, Your Majesty, was that no detailed report of him has reached this country, save that he has the personal advantages and qualities of a prince, 
and he has been traveling in distant and dangerous lands. Ah, uh, nothing wrong with his eyes? Sunstroke or anything? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just saying to His Majesty, Her Royal Highness's character and disposition are so outstandingly... Stuff and nonsense. You know what happened when we had the Tournament of Love last year. I... I, I myself was not present, Your Majesty. I had not yet had the honor of... Uh, I was abroad and had not heard the full story. No. Must have been the other fool. They had all come to pay their homage to Camilla. It was the first time they had ever seen her. The heralds blew their trumpets and announced that she would marry whichever prince was left master of the field when all but one had been unhorsed. The trumpets were blown again. They charged enthusiastically into the fight and then... They all simultaneously fell off their horses and assumed the position of defeat. One of them was not quite so quick as the others. I was very quick. I proclaimed him the victor. <laughs> and at the feast of the betrothal that night, we were all very quick. The chancellor had announced that by the laws of the country, the suitor had to pass one further test. He had to give the correct answer to a riddle. Such undoubtedly is the fact, Your Majesty. Chancellor, there are times for announcing facts and times for looking at things in a broad-minded view. Please remember that. Yes, Your Majesty. It was quite an easy one. I made it up myself. One has four legs and barks like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> a dog! <laughs> you see that? <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. It is it difficult. Apparently he found it very difficult. First he said an eagle, then he said a serpent, then he said two peacocks, a mountain with very slippery size, a moonlight night, the day after tomorrow. One could not <laughs> accuse him of not trying. I did. What I should have said is one could not fail to recognize in his attitude an appearance of doggedness. <laughs> <laughs> then he said death. I nudged the king. Accepting the word nudge for a moment, I rubbed my ankle with one hand, clasped him on the shoulder with the other, and congratulated him on giving the correct answer. He disappeared under the table, and personally, I never saw him again. <laughs> we found him floating in the moat the next morning. But what was he doing in the moat, Your Majesty? Bobby about. Try not to ask needless questions. Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> it all just seems so strange. What does? That of all the princesses one has ever heard of, her Royal Highness lacks the invariable attribute of royalty, supreme beauty. That was your great Aunt Malcolm. You know what she said. It was cryptic. Great Aunt Malcolm's besetting weakness. She came to my christening. That was, she was 101 at the time, and that was 51 years ago. How old would that make her now? 152, Your Majesty. About that, yes. She promised me that I would have all the happiness of which my wife deserved. It struck me at the time, well, when I say at the time, I was only a week old. But it struck me as soon as anything of that nature could strike me. Well, look it out for yourself, Chancellor. It opens up the most interesting field of speculation. Though I haven't liked to go into it all that deeply with Her Majesty. I never heard anything less cryptic. She was only wishing you extreme happiness. I don't think she was wishing me anything, however. But what, Your Majesty, did she wish Her Royal Highness? Ah, well, her godmother, my side of the family, had wished her extreme beauty, which all the women on my side of the family are famous for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, Your Majesty. She said something. Uh, what did she say? With this kiss, a wedding day surprise, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. I thought the last few lines were especially neat, but what it meant... It was very obvious what it meant. Your great aunt Malkin had wished her extreme beauty, which she never got. The wedding day surprise is, is that there will never be a wedding day! The wedding day surprise is if there were a wedding day. So how? Hello, darling. Oh, affairs of state? Don't go, Camilla. Shall I withdraw, Your Majesty? Prince Camilla, you are aware. 
We have Prince Simon arrives today. Oh, he has arrived. They're just letting down the drawbridge. All right, I must. <laughs> you know what the drawbridge is like. It takes at least half an hour to let it down. It wants oil. Have you been grudging its oil? Darling, it wants a new drawbridge. May I have your majesty's permission? Yes, yes. <laughs> have you told the girl? Uh, no, I was just going well, to. Well, then I better have told Camilla. Uh, no, I was just going to win. Well, then you ought to. Are you sure, my dear? Yes, it is our last chance. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> Camilla, I want to talk to you about some of the facts of life. Oh, yes, father. The great fact about marriage is that once you're married, you live happily ever after. All of our history books affirm this. <laughs> your own experience too, darling. Let's confine ourselves with history for the moment. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you get married or who you marry, just that you get married. Now, your mother and I have a plan. Was that it? Going out the door just now? <laughs> yes, it concerns one of your waiting maids. Darling, I have several. The one that leaps to the eyes, so to speak. The one with, well, everything. <laughs> Isabella? That's the oh. one. It is our little plan that she should pass herself off as the princess for the first meeting. A harmless ruse of which you will find countless record in the history book. And she should allure Prince Simon up to yes. That is to say, she should bring him up to the... That is to say that an immediate wedding should take place afterwards and as quietly as possible, in spite of the fact that your great aunt Malcolm is 152, and since you will be wearing the family bridal veil, which is no doubt how the custom arose, <laughs> are you following me so far? You seem to be wandering. I was just wondering why you needed to tell me. A precautionary measure, in case you happen to run into the prince or one of his attendants, in which you should pass yourself off as Isabella. A harmless ruse, of which you will find countless record in history books. Yes, but the occasion need not arise. The woman! Do <laughs> <through> some better! <laughs> Retire to your apartments, we shall cut you with the ceremonies already. Come in, my dear. <laughs> Don't be afraid. There's no reason to be afraid. Has Her Majesty told you what you are supposed to do? It's Her Majesty. Good. Let's see how well you can do it. <laughs> you are sitting there. I am Prince Simon. <laughs> of the beautiful Princess Camilla, of whom he has never seen before. <laughs> this is a serious moment in your life, and you will find that a giggle will not be helpful. <laughs> I'm announced. His Royal Highness Prince Simon. That is me being announced. <laughs> Remember what I said about giggling. You should have a faraway look upon your face. You should be sitting there thinking beautiful thoughts in maiden meditation, <laughs> fancy free, as I was telling you, Your Majesty. <laughs> fancy free, but with the mouth definition. That. <laughs> I approach. I fall upon one knee. And you raise your hand graciously. Graciously, you need not push him in the face. He will take your hand in one of his, and he will kiss it. Mm. Mm, probably not so ardently as that, more like this. And he will say, Princess Camilla, this is the most. <laughs> Princess 
it's, you know, this is my problem. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter what he'll say, the fact is that it will be complimentary. And then he will take right. your hand and bother his, and you will press it to his heart in what you will say. <laughs> no, not coo. Never had anyone do that to me before. That also strikes a wrong note. Let's try something along the lines of Oh, Brit Simon. Try it. Oh, Brit Simon, Brit Simon, oh, Brit Simon. You need not shout it until he said what two or three times. Always take into consideration the possibility that he isn't deaf. You should say it something that hasn't heard. Have a dying fall. Let it play around his head like a flight of dust. Try it again! into the place by your side. My name is Carlo. 
And now, couldn't we sit down? You can sit there if you like. <sighs> Why are you so tired? I've been taking very strenuous exercise. <laughs> <laughs> is that part of the long story? It is. I love stories. Well, this isn't a story, really. You see, I'm an attendant on Prince Simon. He's visiting here. I'm an attendant on Her Royal Highness. Then you know what he's here for? Yes. She's very beautiful, I hear. Did you hear that? Where have you been lately? <laughs> Traveling in distant lands with Prince Simon. Oh. Well, all the same, I don't understand. It's Prince Simon in the palace now. Drawbridge can't be down yet. I don't suppose it is. And what a noise it makes coming down. Isn't it terrible? Yes, I just couldn't stand it. That's why I'm here. But how? <clears throat> well, there's only one way, isn't there? That beech tree. And a swing and a grab for the battlements below. Don't ask me to remember it all. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you crossed the moat by that beech tree? Yes, I got so tired of hanging about. But it's terribly dangerous. That's why I'm so exhausted. <laughs> You're struck. Of course, it's different for me. I'm, I'm sorry, I must have heard you wrong. It's different for me because I'm used to it. You don't mean that you... Yes, often. Oh. And I thought I was a brave man. <laughs> At least, I didn't until five minutes ago. <laughs> and now I don't again. <laughs> but you are. And I think it's wonderful that you did it straight off. But you did it. No, not the first time when I was a child. You, you mean that you crashed? You only fall into the moat. The moat? Well, can you swim? Of course. So you swam to the edge and they fished you out and wallowed you, and the next day you tried again. Well, if that isn't pluck. Of course I didn't. I tried it again at once. Or at least I tried again at once. It wasn't until the third time that I actually did it. You see, I was afraid I might lose my nerve. Afraid she might lose her nerve. There's a way of getting over from this side, too. A tree goes up from the wall and you jump onto another tree. I don't think it's quite so easy. <laughs> Not quite so easy. You should have to show me sometime. But perhaps it'd be best if you taught me how to swim first. See, I've often heard about swimming, but never... You can't swim! Oh, no. Don't be surprised. There are a lot of things I can't do. I'll tell you about them as soon as I've got a few years to spare. You can't swim and yet you cross by the beech tree. And you're ever so much heavier than I am. That was brave. You keep talking about how light you are. I must see if there's anything to it. <laughs> Come here. Nobody knew what it meant. 
and I grew up to be very plain. But then, I met one of my—I met my godmother in force one day. It was my tenth birthday. Nobody knows this except you. Except us. Except us. <laughs> and she told me what that meant. It meant that I was beautiful. But everyone else was to go on thinking me ugly until my wedding day. Because, she said, she didn't want me to grow up spoiled, willful, and vain, as I should have done if everyone kept telling me how beautiful I was. The best thing in the world, she said, was to be quite sure of yourself, but not to expect admiration from others. So, ever since then, my mirror has told me that I'm beautiful, while everyone else thinks me ugly. And I get great fun out of that. <laughs> well, seeing that Dulcibella is the result, I can only say that your godmother was very, very wise. <laughs> now tell me your secret. Very well. It isn't such a pretty one, you see. Prince Simon was going to woo Princess Camilla when he heard that she was very beautiful and haughty and imperious. All you would have been if your godmother hadn't been so wise. And being a very ordinary looking man himself, he suggested to one of his attendants a man named Carlo, of extremely attractive appearance, <laughs> he should take the place of the prince and win the princess's hand. And then, at the last moment, they would change places. But how? The prince was going to be married in full armor, <laughs> with his visor down. Oh, what fun! <laughs> Neat, but not so terribly funny. Why do you laugh? Well, that's another secret. If it comes to that, I've got another secret as well. Shall we exchange again? You go first this time. Very well. I am not Carlo. I am Simon. Ah! <laughs> what is it? Cramp. <laughs> I am Simon. Is that better? I am Simon. I know. Huh. How did you know? Well, you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> Oughtn't you to swoon or something? Why? History records very similar bruises. Well, I've never read history. And I thought I was being profoundly original. <laughs> now tell you my secret. For reasons very much like your own, the Princess Camilla, who is said to be very plain, feared to meet Prince Simon. Is the drawbridge down yet? Do your people give a faint, surprised cheer every time it gets down? Naturally. <laughs> well, it came down about three minutes ago. <laughs> and at this moment, your man Carlo is declaring his passionate love for my maid, Dusabella. That, I think, is very funny. Dusabella, by the way, is in love with the man she calls Eggs, so I hope Carlo isn't getting too carried away. Carlo has a girl he calls the Little Woman. So <laughs> Eggs has nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> by the way, I don't know if you heard, but I said, or as good as said, that I am Princess Camilla. Oh, I wasn't surprised. History, of which I read quite a great deal, because <laughs> many of the losers. May I try holding you again? I thought 
not so. Uh, she will prepare your royal highness for the wedding. Ah, yes, most important. I beg pardon, your majesty, if I've done wrong, but I found this gentleman wandering. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute ago. Don't you forget. The answer is dog good. Dog good. <laughs> Proceed, Chancellor. There is my theory that everything in my country should happen constitutionally. By the constitution of this country, a suitor to Her Royal Highness's hand cannot be deemed successful until he has given the correct answer to a riddle. <laughs> and thus failed to win his bride. By coincidence, he was found later in the moat. <laughs> I have now but to ask your royal highness if you are prepared for the ordeal. Yes. <laughs> I might also add, as slight historical interest to our visitors, that by the constitution of the country, the same question <laughs> cannot be asked on two successive occasions. What is this? This riddle was propounded exactly a century ago, and we must take it as a fortunate omen, as it was well and truly solved. I may want my sword dressed. The riddle is this. Which is it that has four legs and mews like a cat? A dog. <laughs> What counts? Isn't it? Uh, what do you? Ooh. 
think of Prince Simon and Camilla? I adore him. We'll be ever so happy together. Yes, it's what I said. It's your marriage you look happily ever after. Go ahead and prepare yourself for the ceremony. Yes, Father. Of the ma marriage. I guess that would account for it. Yes. 